imagine this you are managing a growing business with sensitive customer data and company secrets and suddenly you hear about a cyber attack that threatens the security of critical systems and you realize that your network needs protection and that's where the powerful tools like fortigate firewall comes into the play in today's world cyber threats are becoming more sophisticated and, and every business large or small is a potential target whether you are a startup or a government organization or a global corporation ensuring your network is secure is very essential fortigate firewalls offer top tier protection blocking malicious traffic and safeguarding your networks from hackers viruses and data breaches so guys in today's tutorial we are going to explore what exactly is fortigate firewalls so guys here's the agenda of our today's session first we are going to start with an overview of fortigate then we are going to learn about interfaces and routing then we are going to explore the firewall policies moving ahead we are going to discuss about a real world scenario about authenticating network users and integrating ldaf for user authentication then we are going to discuss a bit about inspecting ssl traffic and blocking malware then we are going to understand a bit about controlling web access using web filtering then we are going to configure fortigate's intrusion prevention system and finally we are going to discuss about controlling application access now here is a short quiz to test your knowledge what is the primary function of a fortigate firewall and your options are a to enhance wifi signal strength to block unauthorized network traffic and secure the network to improve internet browsing speed or to monitor social media activity now before we move into the session just a quick info guys simply learn has got ces certification which is certified ethical hacking course you can master cyber security with ec councils ceh course and also you're going to interact with accredited trainers finally you can think like a hacker or use ai driven tools to protect systems from threats you'll also learn to identify and stop cyber attacks before they cause harm you'll gain hands on experience with trusted ethical hacking techniques This course is in collaboration with the EC Council. So guys hurry up now and click on the link below to get enrolled. And also guys I request you that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell icon so that you don't miss out any update. Let's get started. So guys let's start with understanding what is exactly Fortigate. Fortigate is a powerful security device and it is used by organizations of all sizes to protect their networks from external and internal threats. For instance, an e-commerce company might use Fortigate to secure its website and customer data. Now by deploying Fortigate, the company can configure its firewall to block malicious web traffic against DDoS attacks and inspect SSL encrypted traffic to ensure that no sensitive information is being transmitted in an insecure manner. So guys this is kind of very much important and you can see that this is also a part of the operating system and it is made by the company called as Fortin and uh, you can actually use this given a uh, tool uh, I would suggest you using AWS so you have this instance of you know so you have a uh, respective interface of Fortigate where you can create your instance and you can uh, run that firewall So there are different versions I'll just show you. So if you just type AWS Fortigate, so just click on this and uh, so guys if you go to the AWS marketplace over here, so you have this respective uh, Fortinet. It is taking some time to load. Okay, let us wait for a couple of minutes and uh, you can see you can uh, just click on this video and get a brief idea regarding the respective Uh, architecture of how it is actually using the Fortinet, and uh, if you see the respective thing, it is uh, it has the Fortigate VM, and um, on that virtual machine you can uh, you know configure your Fortinet security, you can configure your firewalls, and uh, let's say when you are setting a Fortigate, let's say in a small office, so you might uh, configure two interfaces, let's say one for LAN which can be local area network, and one for the WAN which could be wide area network. for example if the wan is connected to the internet and let's say the lan interface connects to the office internal network you would assign the wan's interface and ip address from your isp and you can configure the lan interface with your private ip range for example you can choose 192.168.1.1/24 
Now, in addition to that, guys, you could also configure static route, uh, which is going to direct all the internet bound traffic from LAN to the WAN interface. And this is going to ensure that all your office devices can communicate with the internet while traffic within the LAN remains local. Now, I'll give you a much more better scenario. See, in a typical office network, let's say you set up a static route on the 48. Let's say you are using AWS. To configure uh, the given uh, 40 gate, you have to ensure that any traffic from the LAN uh, and, and the LAN IP address could be 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And you could allow any uh, traffic route, basically 0.00, .00 uh, slash 0. So any uh, traffic coming all over there, uh, it could be routed through the WAN's interface and which is connected to the ISP. Now, uh, let's talk about how you are going to set up the firewall policies. So if you just see this architecture in this respective video, let's consider a scenario where, uh, let's say, organization is uh, required to restrict the access to certain websites. For example, let's say social media, and it allows internet access uh, for work-related activities. So you can configure a firewall policy which could define something like this. Let's say you have the incoming interface from the LAN and uh, the traffic from the internal device Basically, that's your. And uh, let's talk a bit about the outgoing interface, which could be like uh, the traffic to the internet, which is basically uh, the traffic to the internet. Then you have this source address. Uh, it applies to all internal devices. And you have this something called as destination address. And uh, it could be for all internet traffic service, like it could be HTTPS or web traffic. Then you have the respective action. You could allow it for work-related sites. You could block social media sites. And uh, this configuration uh, helps the organization enforce an internet access policy by using the FortiGate. And also you can block social media websites. So most of you are pretty much aware that in your organization, you cannot access certain uh, websites. For example, like you cannot use Flipkart or you cannot access Instagram. So these all happen because the IT team of your organization sets up this firewall policy. But you would also have access to necessary business resources like your email, project management tool and cloud-based platform. Now, guys, let me also tell you a scenario, let's say you are in university and your university wants to allow access to its internal network only for registered students and staff. The university could integrate LDAP authentication with the FortiGate. So let's say when a student connects to the campus Wi-Fi, they are prompted to log in using their university credentials. And believe me, this was exactly the same thing in my university. Just log in with your username and password. Now guys, once you're logged in, their access is granted according to the policy set in FortiGate. And for enhanced security, the university could also implement two-factor authentication, which requires a student to enter a code sent to their mobile phone in addition to their username and password. And also, guys, the university's network administrator sets up an LDAP server in the FortiGate, linking it to the institution's central directory. A student and faculty are authenticated using LDAP directory, ensuring that only authorized users can access the network resources. So if you see this given um, interface, so this is how you basically work in the you know, FortiGate CLI. So let's say you are configuring any systems interface, then you type edit and give the name, then, then you set the virtual DOM, and then you set up your mode. And what could be the mode? Either you could choose a static or through DHCP or you know through triple PoE. And then you set your IP address, then you set your security mode, and then you shape your respective profile. Here you can also see, you will also have to set up device identification. You can also allow access all over here. You can ping to the HTTPS and uh, all those things. Then uh, you can set up uh, EAP identity, you could set up EAP password. Also you can set up your secondary IP also. So these are the respective configurations that you need to do. And I would humbly request you do follow the FortiGate, uh, you know, official documentation because most of the things you are going to get it from here. Since it is a proper product by organization. So whenever you are using any organization based product, so you have to look into the official documentation, all this. And at the end, you can see you are also setting an IP, you are setting the 
allow access policy, all those things in your respective thing. And this just looks like a simple instruction based command. So basically, this looks like a set of instructions. All the networking guys would surely know it. And similarly, if I just also talk about inspecting SSL traffic. Now, guys, let us talk to them. One of the most important aspect of our given FortiGate, that is inspecting SSL traffic. Many organizations today use SSL to encrypt sensitive communications. However, SSL encryption can also be exploited by cyber criminals to hide malicious activities such as malware transmission. FortiGate's SSL inspection feature allows the device to decrypt SSL traffic and inspect it for potential threats. For example, a financial institution may use FortiGate to inspect encrypted traffic to detect any malware or malicious code hidden in SSL connection to external sites. To configure SSL, the organization would set up deep inspection in FortiGate's SSL or SSH inspection settings. And it enables the FortiGate to decrypt the traffic before inspecting it for threats like spyware, trojans, and any other forms of malware. Let me give you one example, guys. Let's consider there is a user uh, at a bank uh, who actually wants to access uh, an encrypted website using HTTPS. Now with SSL inspection enabled, FortiGate decrypts the SSL connection, scans for threats and then re-encrypts the traffic before it reaches the user's browser. And this is pretty much amazing. FortiGate also includes powerful antivirus feature that scans all incoming and outgoing traffic for the known viruses and malware. For example, in a corporate environment, employees frequently download attachments from the email. Now, FortiGate's antivirus feature can also set to scan these attachments for malware, which ensures that malicious file is detected and blocked before it reaches to the employee's device. An example of this could be a user, let's say, receives an email with a, an attachment that contains hidden virus. And the antivirus feature of FortiGate scans the file as it's downloaded, identified the virus, blocks it from entering the network and preventing any potential security breach. For example, a sales employee downloads an email attachment which turns out to be a Trojan. And um, you would actually be thanking to FortiGate's antivirus feature, which basically blocks it even before it reaches to the employee's computer. And so much importance of this is there when you want to safeguard an organization's network. Also, guys, let me tell you another scenario. Let's say, guys, uh, your company wants to restrict employees' access to non-work-related websites to increase the productivity. Now, you can actually use FortiGate's web filtering and organization can block access to categories like social media, gaming, or any other content which is restricted by company's organization. Web filtering a profile could could be configured to block sites in social media category, while you could allow access to productivity sites like Google Docs and Microsoft Teams. You can apply this policy and uh, the administrator would navigate to the security profiles, apply the web filter, is going to create a new profile that is going to block the social media and then apply it to this profile to the relevant firewall policy. And this ensures that the employee can't access Facebook or Twitter during work hours, but can still use internet for work-related activities. Let's say an employee tries to access Facebook during work hours. Then FortiGate's web filtering is going to block the site, ensure that the employee remains focused on the work and also on the task without any unnecessary distraction. And these are some of the most important things which an organization looks for. Now, let us also discuss a bit about configuring your FortiGate's uh, intrusion prevention system. So IPS, as, as we all know, is crucial for detecting and blocking network-based attacks like buffer overflows or SQL injection. For example, a retail company could use FortiGate's intrusion prevention system to monitor and block traffic, uh, attempting to exploit vulnerabilities in their e-commerce website. So by enabling IPS, FortiGate can detect and stop attacks like DDoS, ransomware or malware before they impact the company's operations. The IPS identifies is as a suspicious pattern in the network traffic, attempt to exploit a known vulnerability in the website's content management system. FortiGate blocks this traffic in real time, preventing an attack that could also compromise sensitive customer data. And 
This FortiGate's application control feature helps prevent any unwanted applications from running on the network. For instance, a company might want to block the use of file sharing applications like BitTorrent or restrict access to non-work related streaming services. So, network administrator can create an application control profile and the company can identify and block these specific applications based on their signature or behavior. For example, the company could apply an application control profile that blocks applications like Skype, BitTorrent or Spotify and to increase the productivity. And also they want to direct to the apps like Slack and Zoom. Now, this is actually going to ensure that employees only use applications necessary for their work, improving network security and performance. Let's say an employee attempts to use BitTorrent to download a very large file during work hours. FortiGate application control profile could block the traffic and ensure that company bandwidth is solely used for business purposes. Now guys, in conclusion, I want to say that FortiGate actually provides a comprehensive suite of security features which is designed to protect against a variety of cyber threats. So by properly configuring interfaces, firewall policies, user authentications, SSL infection and malware blocking, web filtering and also applying IPS, businesses can ensure that their network remains secure efficient and free from any disruptions caused by any malicious activity. Each of these features play a very critical role in safeguarding the organization's infrastructure while maintaining smooth operations. So that was all for today's video guys. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's tutorial on FortiGate. And also guys, I request you that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell icon so that you don't miss out any update from our end.